Games Master. For Games Masters, welcome to the complete toolkit of everything, including campaign and world builder, encounters, looting, handouts, questions, sound, and lighting. Everything is home brewable with online or offline play. Control the adventure, control it all, no matter where you are. For players, everything in one place for all your character needs. Store notes, quests, access your available compendiums, roll dice, interact with other players as well as the Games Master and so much more. For spectators and streamers, connect your device to the game for an overview of what is happening in real time. Is that player almost dead? Has the druid wild shaped? Now you know exactly what is happening as well. And finally, take your streams to the next level by incorporating real-time character and campaign data into your live stream, all controlled from the comfort of your control panel. The UGM will be available on more devices than you can shake a stick at. Don't miss out. Set your reminders as the Ultimate Games Master is kickstarting on July 27th. Visit theultimategamesmaster.com. Any platform, any game, anywhere. Would you like to know more? The Ultimate Games Master. And here we are. Hello, welcome to Band of Badgers. Um, I, <laughs> no, go for it, go for it. That's what we need. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Dave, your host for this evening. And joining me um, as co-host is Steve. Say hello, Steve. Uh, good evening. How are you this evening? I am, I am very well. I, I was I was going to do that joke. I know you said that, but I wasn't going to do it. I was, I was going to... Uh, I, I forgot to put in Steve. I forgot to get it. <laughs> I need to get that. We said it last time. I need to. I need to. I just sort that out. Anyway, uh, this session we're doing a live Q and A with Justin Heisman. He's back. I don't know why, but he keeps coming back, which is great for us. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, he is the lead developer for um, a new app. I was going to say a new Kickstarter, a new app called the Ultimate Games Master, which is an app. And it's on Kickstarter right now. So if you're watching this in real time, uh, we are in July 2021. There is a Kickstarter. If you're watching this in 2022, you've probably missed it, but it's probably it should be out and available now. You can just pick it up, regular price. You don't get a Kickstarter discount. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be talking about that. Um, so specifically, also, this particular session, this is session three. We, we kind of have four planned at the moment. But uh, this session, we're going to look at how to build um, how to build your campaign. So originally, we had some ideas about what it might do. You know, rats in the basement of a pub, that kind of thing. Nice and easy. So that in the fourth session, we will take our characters and play that campaign. Just a mini campaign, just for, for a few giggles. Then literally just about five minutes ago, I had an idea of, let's ask the audience... <laughs> and see what they, see what they come come up with, and I think it's probably a bad idea because it probably ends up with a natural TPK. Um, we'll 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 wait and see. Um, I don't know, but if you have a question for Justin, please do put it in live chat, uh, capital uh, capital word question, and Steve, the co-host, will shout it out. Just Steve, just interrupt us, um, and we can ask those questions. And Justin, if you see any questions in live chat please also do shout them out, answer them. Stick a yeah, finger just, up if you want to. Um, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Throw something. Thing he says, uh, you know, with regards to questions, easier said than done. Every question I have thought of, Justin answers before I can finish typing it. That That <laughs> is pretty true. We have, uh, this is what I keep saying. Um, and if you've seen the Kickstarter page, this is something I just mentioned to Justin as well. Justin took one of my quotes about the app does everything apart from make the popcorn. Um, so thank you for putting that on the Kickstarter page. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> These videos are also on there. It's not just that. It's But it was nice to have. And, uh, and everyone else's quote was like, yeah, this this app does is really, really good. It's it's everything we need to get organized for, for playing D&D. &D. And I'm there saying, it does everything. It just doesn't make popcorn. Um, so yeah, that's great. <laughs> Question number one from the, from the audience is, can you make it make the popcorn? Well, if, yeah. <laughs> if it's hooked up to your home system. Exactly. You can hook next to a smart plug or something. And then, you know, you get to a point in the game, you click a button and it click. 
clicks it on and starts popping away in the background. I don't know. Every, it could be a good sound effect. Every, <laughs> every natural 20, you get popcorn. Who knows? It, it, yeah, it could yeah. do all kinds of things. But I, anyway. I it, should be a, it should be that one you get popcorn for. <laughs> or the burnt popcorn. Um, or you have to go and make a cup of tea. Oh, that'd be good. Um, so, We've anyway. done that before. We have done that before. It works, though, doesn't it? Apart from when yeah, you did. don't need tea. But or like the person's tea who's making the tea because they're always rolling natural ones. Yeah, that as well, yeah. Um, so today is a day, Justin, that your Kickstarter launched. Yeah. How are you, how are you feeling? Because there's, there's a, it's like a roller coaster. Are you hurtling like towards like, ah, 30 days of horror? Or is, like, is it all just suspension as you build up? Do you feel relieved now that you've pushed the button and you're going live? What's, what are the feelings? There's loads of feelings. It's like, you know, it's it's a funny feeling because we're all scared stiff. We're all nervous as anything. We, we got really good products, but we're just terrified. And as I said earlier, we we um we were like, oh let's let's record us pressing the button and then we couldn't <laughs> find the button to launch it. <laughs> it's really like, yeah, is it like F1? <laughs> no. <laughs> And it looks so yeah. easy on on TV. When you see people do it on TV, I, again, we were just having chat before we went live about, uh, we use Wormwood as an example. And it's like, yeah, just boop, and they go live. And then yeah. suddenly they stand around and yay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you're like, shit, where's the button? The button. Where's the button? <laughs> Well, we did, it wasn't where we expected it to be. You'd think it'd be either at the top or the bottom, but no, it was in the middle of a huge wad of text, like right in the middle of the page. See, so, yeah. user experience well, gone wrong there. I like I like um, salty sweet popcorn. To answer a question, but we're still talking about popcorn. We are. <laughs> Not your fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you put it on your website. <laughs> Look at what you started. Is it? Oh, you could do that as a stretch goal. Get a bag of popcorn. <laughs> Here we go. Here's because because actually the stretch goal. Let's mention some of the stretch goals uh, and some of the, the stuff that's in the car, Kickstarter because we can talk about it now. We can. Um, you've got dice bags. You've got coins. You've got posters of original artwork. Yeah. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Pretty stuff going on there. Yeah. Lots of kind of merch that we didn't really think of before, and uh, we thought, oh well, people really like that physical product. So let's um, let's talk to a few people and um, and get some physical stuff in there. But yeah, we got like a lot. I mean, I did mention coins and dice and dice bags and uh, really nice cases and all this stuff. But yeah, um, Pete, our artist, is uh, one of the one of mm -hmm. the tiers is to, for him to uh, do a complete design of one of your characters. So you'll have a, a portrait of a character. That's one of them. Um, there's quite a few. Something in there for everyone, I think. Good, everyone good. gets a mention in the credits, so it's going to be a really nice credit screen in the app. Um, so you'll be able to see yourself in lights in there, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah. You just didn't Basically, put popcorn in. I didn't put popcorn no. in, but, you know, there's nothing to stop us putting it in as an app. <laughs> free bag of popcorn. <laughs> get, get a free bag of butter kissed. Yeah. <laughs> sweet, sweet or sour. Yeah. It's one of the tiers uh, has also got uh, five pre-made maps as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, so is one of the maps uh, the one you showed the other the other day? That uh, was a, the, the three D ISO view of the village, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that that's um, that's one of the uh, the cave. I think is one of them. Um, I need to speak to Andy on that, but um, yeah, the cave. I think the cave is one of them, which is uh, like a a small pirate complex could be anything could be a goblin complex or whatever you like it to be um not sure of the other ones yet but they're all going to be really that kind of quality right yeah nice yeah rendered up um ready, Dynamic ready lighting. Uh, and the thing is with our with our maps they'll all be you know you, you'll be able to have them all preloaded into ugm because one one of the aspects we haven't shown you because it it's not the most interesting part is uh, the bundle system where you can um I'll show you it quickly now, and you can see yeah. how easy it is to, um, to to load new stuff. So you literally switch, go down switch to the settings. Switch cameras. Here we go. Yeah, um, and in the settings screen, you've got some boring stuff in here, like device syncing and all that rubbish. You've got a bundle manager in here as well, 
Um, and this has a whole list of different things that you can download and include, including themes. Um, I don't know, I think I've got them all installed. Oh, there's some themes, some game sets. So we've got the PRD for Pathfinder, SRD, um, stuff like that. A whole load of moods, which I've already got installed, I think. Got those. So yeah, all the mood packs, you've got creature mood packs and stuff like that. Um, and and you can you know with that you can install any base base um, maps system we've got. So the five bundle will be an additional um, bundle in here. You just click, oh, well, I'll install that, and you install it, mm -hmm. and then it becomes available for you to include in your in your games. Um, and that's uh, like a lot of the different things that we've got offered on the. Um, Kickstarter, it, it's very easy. It's like, like I say, you just it just appears as a new bundle. If you like it, install it and use it. If you don't, if you're not interested in that one, then don't bother. It's up to you. Yeah. But you know, bundles can be sound libraries, music libraries, um, sci-fi theme for the whole of UGM, um, game sets. You know, D and D, whatever different game sets. Uh, and tools as well. So we've got like some some quite fun tools that are in the pipeline. Like um, instead of it always being having to roll dice for chance, uh, we've got things like a roulette wheel, which is a full three D roulette wheel nice. that bombs round and you know it it can land on whatever you program. You know you customize all the different uh, segments, and that's one another way of doing it. So yeah, that's a, another kind of bundle, which is a tool bundle content so yeah and campaigns as well of course so different yeah. campaigns can go in as um uh, as a bundle as well so you know you can create your own ones or you can go and and download one of our pre-made ones so I, I was going to ask about the um, you talked about pathfinder prd and obviously the the D, &D srd which is the uh in, in essence the open license rule sets yeah. if somebody wanted some of the add-on books let's say for dnd for example so uh you've got more race class or subclass options is that something that you might think about adding in the future if the demand was there because you, you i believe you would then have to pay a license to, to wizards to be able to do that or provide yeah that, i mean you? definitely i mean it's something that that you know if like, like i said last time if you're running a specific campaign or you've got say uh i don't know what we've got over there uh one of one of the additional uh, you know official books yeah. you can take the content out of it because you you know you've bought the book and you can enter it manually yourself but yeah. you know yeah. in the future we yeah we'd love to be able to offer um official stuff within you know within the bundle manager you know you can have like full players handbook will be in there and things like that that's something we'd love to include um but as it is at the moment you know, we we need to get over the hurdle of um, talking to the right person at Wizards. So Wizards, uh, if you're listening, Payzone, yeah. if you're listening, That's it. get in touch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's very easy. If if they do agree to do that, then great. We could include it as a, you know, as a bundle um, yeah. and just download it from one of our, you know, from our official server. Um, like I say, you don't need to do that. If you own the content, you can add it manually yourself anyway. So. Yep, you can, and um, and that is the, the that's the great feature about it. It's it's fully customized. We can put in there whatever you want. Mm. So saying saying that, Steve, we're gonna we're gonna interject now. We're gonna start our campaign building session, and where you just said we're gonna put in whatever you want, we're gonna open it up to you, the Twitch live audience. This is a bad idea, but we're, yes, we're, we're going to let you dictate what is going to now what what is going to be in this campaign. So, what kind of creatures we're going to fight? What might there be traps and stuff? Let's let's take the answers from the audience as we get to each stage. Um, and me and Steve, <laughs> in a few weeks' time, we will be playing <laughs> whatever you put in front of us. So, are you, are you be um... gentle? <laughs> Are they choosing a character? Uh, do you want them to choose a character as well? Uh, you've gone down this road. I'm merely taking the next step. 
I think we should control our characters. I think we should create our own characters. <laughs> and, Jed and... disagrees with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're they're going to they're gonna do, you know, like spiders and beholders and things like that. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna TPK us in the first room. We're going to like make five rooms or something like that. Literally a dungeon crawl. It doesn't have to be a story unless the audience come up with a story. And it's going to be really bad. See, whenever, whenever anyone writes spike trap, I just imagine this this sort of fall away wall trap, and a vampire comes out, and jumps on you. Well, that, that can, that can, now, don't say it, because now it's going to be there. Just oh, sh- brilliant. I think. But anyway, right. So let's switch over cameras again. Let's have a look at what the steps are for a DM to create a campaign. So let's okay. uh, let's go and have a look. Right, so first thing to do, we go in the Games Master door. Uh, we're going to go into Designer mode. I will put this into my current game set because I know there's some goodies in there we can use anyway. Now, we want to create a campaign. So we go into current campaigns and we create a new campaign. So we're going to create a new one, add a new campaign. Yep. And we call this, what's, what's the name? What's we call it? Uh, we, we can wait 20 seconds for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> when we need the tumbleweed. <laughs> I, yeah, no, that was a nice get out of jail free there, Steve. That was good. Well used. Um... It, it's coming any second. <laughs> I, I was thinking really like Badger Dissection or The Last Days of the Badgers or something. Yeah. Battle of the Badgers. The the badger roasting or badger battle roasting. Of the, I like battle of the badgers to be yeah. honest I, I do like that that one gets my vote in fact we still battle need to sort out battle of the bands but with, yeah. uh, with Pezo but um, I'm not sure if uh, if their band is still going we need to check oh can't spell battle badger. of Cheer, badgers. Cheer, ba- badgers to death by Big Tough Pete thank you thank you for that Pete <laughs> Pete by the way is part of the UGM team and obviously wants to kill us. <laughs> battle of the Badgers, then it is. So, set the new name. There we go. So, we've got Battle of the Badgers. Now, we can go into that now. Oh, yeah, we need to accept the license because we're using the open gaming license. Yeah. So, we always have to accept that. So, then we go in. Just pick anyone for now. Doesn't matter who. So, okay, we are in our. Battle of the Badgers campaign overview now. So we're going to go to the campaign player. Um, this is going to be a very short one-shot kind of campaign. So we're just going to create one chapter. So we've got chapter one to the death, something like that. Um, I was going to say to the Thunderdome. <laughs> we'll create a new location. Uh, where's it going to be set? Where Where is this location? Any any ideas? We could be set like in a I don't know a village in a graveyard. Where where do we reckon? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you we we'll give you ten seconds. Badgerville. Badgerville. <laughs> there we go. It. There we go. That's 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 where we are. We're in Badgerville. So there we go. We're in Badgerville. <laughs> now we can go into there. Now, Badgerville, um, obviously, we, we haven't got a map for it. This is a little task. So anyone watching, if you um, if you want to go and hunt for a, a map that we can just chuck on, um, do it, and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll add that on as we go and when you find it. So I'm not sure where they're going to write that, maybe on, on your Discord or on our Discord or somewhere. Um, anyway, so we're in our badger badgerville area and we're going to create a, a first of all an area so this can be um so what's in badgerville well there's a boozy public house now called the boozy badger public house the boozy badger, the boozy badger. pub what else is in uh, what else is in badgerville I think a, a, a derelict old Lord of the Manor's mansion. Okay. 
You're going for the haunted house feel, Steve. Oh, I was going for the haunted house. You're feel, going yeah. for the Scooby Doo with the <coughs> vampire in the wall. Uh, yeah, Jen uh, has, has written in Hounds of Badgerville, so I was, yeah. I was, I was feeling that Scooby Mansion. There we go. So I mean, that'll do for now. So we can. Um, so let's go back. Let's have a look then. So we've got our chapter, chapter one. This is our this is our location. We're in Badgerville. And in Badgerville, we've got a boozy pub and we've got the old Scooby Mansion. So in the boozy pub, we can go into that. And here we can start building up our, our, um, our pub now. So you know, if, um, for instance, I mean, you might want to break this down a little bit more. So what you could do, we, we're going to keep this simple for today. But if you wanted to break your boozy pub down into rooms and stuff like that, you might want to put your boozy pub as a location on here. And then you go into that and you can break that down into multiple different areas within that pub. But to keep things simple, we're just going to create an area for each kind of building for now. So we're going to, um, first of all, we'll do a little overview. So you just drag and drop, grab the overview, drop it on the page. And this is something just for you to, um, as a quick glance, to think, oh, okay, this is, this, is where, this is where our players are now. So... Uh, what's we what's what's it like in there? Old. It's a uh, it's a, what I would describe it a sawdust okay. on the floor pub. Pub <laughs> with sawdust on the floor. I mean floor. So that that kind of is just a generic thing for us to as when we enter there. That's kind of what we see first. We go okay, just to nod give you a little nudge to know where you are you can then have a gm note uh, we won't bother with that for now but we'll add some story to it so we go in there and this is our story editor so this is the kind of thing that we would read out to um our players so we entered this area we now mentally know it's the old pub with sawdust on the floor and now we can really make break this down a bit more so um so we can say something like uh this old public house um, bustles with the sound of found of what happy drunks or <laughs> of yeah uh, drunken murmuring that sounds good drunken Murmur. And the, the smells of Green. frying Tolkas sausages with the smell whiff of fresh sausages whiff uh, and the whiff of freshly spiced potatoes <laughs> with the smells of sausages and freshly spiced potatoes. And, El Castro um, has, uh, has said, spit and sawdust, an odour of wet badger permeates the air. Many patrons sit nursing drinks. <laughs> I just like, a... uh, I like the smell of uh, wet badger. <laughs> yeah, that, we could use the wet badger, I think. That's got to be a bit uh, rank, sort of odour. Yeah, well, I'll just copy that. And stale out. I, I think we're definitely driving towards a, a dark, dingy, smoky. You know, you know what? Look, right. A few <laughs> a few months back, Beedling Grim did 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 the same thing with Deborah and Wall, and they created a really nice tavern on the side <laughs> of a mountain, surrounded by snow, which had like axe throwing games and free drinks and gambling. We've created sawdust on the floor, piss heads probably pissing in the corner or just pissing in their own seats. Is that seriously the best we can do? <laughs> yeah, but let's face it. If we, if we created something at the top of a cliff overlooking a mountain range with fresh snow outside, it'd just be packed to the rafters, wouldn't it? <laughs> what we're creating here is a nice pub. You can get a seat. You can get a drink. <laughs> it's never going to be busy, is it? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Um, there is a mysterious character 
Jason at the end of the bomb. Um, next to them is a table of commoners. Shouting about how bad the food is. Yet still eat away. Something like that. We can go back and edit this. So there we go. We've got our our story text editor. So there so what so we come in here, we've got old stinking pub. We saw that's <laughs> funny. We know where we are as a GM. Story text, what we read. Um, this could be really big, so you could you could run it as an auto queue as well, um, or you could just read it off there. This is a small one, so it's fine. So this old public house bustles with the sound of drunken murmuring and the smells of sausages, spiced freshly spiced potatoes, and an odor of wet badger permeates <laughs> the air. Many patrons sit nursing drinks. There is a mysterious character drinking at the end of the bar, and next to them is a table of commoners shouting about how bad the food is, yet they still eat away. <laughs> so there's our start. We can, um, we can drop on a NPC or a monster thing, so we can drop that on there. And let's say that we're, we'll add it. We'll, it'll be a monster, but it'll be a. Um, let's say the. Um, it can be an acolyte. The mysterious character is an acolyte. And, and we'll have a. You can have NPCs, but we haven't set them up. But we'll have a. We'll have some commoners as well, just sitting at the table. I, I kind of just misread that screen because I know that's just in alphabetical order, but it's like NPC Abelef just sitting in the corner of the pub. Of, what? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So we have those sit there, uh, just so we know. You you can stick graphics against them if they were if they were one of the NPCs. Um, they'd have a nice graphic there or whatever. So there we go. That's sat at the table. Let's let's actually give that a give that a, a title. Sat. That table. There we go. Now, what else can we do here? Um, what else do you want to be able to do in this pub? Shall we? We can add um, some interest points. A quest. Um, I think we definitely need a quest. I to, think just so. To, just to get out of the pub. Yeah, let's stick a quest on here for now. And um, this can be um, go investigate the old um, We could say um, if the party speak to the Mysterious character. They might give them this small task. If they are worthy, <laughs> and we can send it to players or whatever. So save that. That's okay. So there's our quest. Um, what else should we do in this uh, in this pub? We can. Or that there's a puzzle. Yeah, we could do a puzzle. We'd have to work that out pr prior to going to, to creating it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I haven't got any puzzles up my sleeve at the moment. <laughs> how, how about we have an, an interest point? There's there's some ga there's gambling or something. Is that, is that be saying yeah. you know there's an interest point? Yeah, we can do that. So let's drag on an interest point. Well, that's gone. Let's save that. Easy Badger Pub. So let's say, what did you say it was going to be? A, 
um, a, a table of uh, poker or three card ante or something. A, a card game. game of poker. Um, there is a game of poker going on, and it is getting furious. Something like that. There's our interest point. See what you can do with interest points. You you can they can be associated with places on a map and things like that as well. Um, but it just it's just a, it's just a note for you as a GM that there's going to be a certain number of things that that they might be able to do sort of interactions with mm -hmm. in in this in so this room. It, for example, when you're running this for your players, you know they get situated at a table. One goes up to the bar. You could do a perception check. You notice off in the corner they're having a quiet yeah. game of cards. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you can you can go as far down as this if you like. I mean, if you mm. want to do that, you can just drag in uh, an ability, and we'll say, oh, it's just a DC ten. Um, notice um, cheating <laughs> poker player. Maybe that's probably a bit more. Give him a third. Give him a twelve. Um, and that would be a perception check. So, yeah. So you've now. Where I'll put it. I'll put it up there. Move them down a bit. So you've got. There's lots of different kind of things that you can add in here. And um, to save that. Move them down a bit. So we can put that above the game of poker. Or maybe below. So we've got our notice a che cheating player, perception check of 12, got the game of poker going on. We've got our in our quest if the party speaks to this mysterious character at the bar. Um, we've got some people sat at a table, we've got some story going on. And we're slowly building this up now. Uh, you can sep drop in some separators just to sort of split mm -hmm. things up a bit. If you wanted to do that, um, you've got spaces as well that you can use to just drop in that sort of sp puts big spaces between them. But I think maybe that's that's good for now. Let's... I, I've, I've got one question. Um, could you give the, the the bartender an inventory or something if if you, know, if you want to list yeah. ale prices, food prices, uh, lodging prices, that sort of thing? Yeah, so what you would do you could you could come out to um your npcs and we'll create we'll, we'll create a very quick npc uh yeah we create him uh bob the barman and his name is bob so we can go into there and you can give him uh, a full in, you know inventory of whatever you like here so we can say, oh, he's got so much money on him. Um, he's got, got some silver as well. Um, and he might have, have you got any ale in here? I don't think I'll put any ale in here. He has a killer whale. <laughs> yeah, he's a I mean, killer just, whale as a friend. You yeah. just <laughs> pick up random things. He has an abacus. It's an abacus. Yeah, he's got an abacus. He is the barman. So he's going to add up. So we've got, uh, he's got, uh, let's give him some more than one piece of gold. Uh, let's say he's got 20 pieces of gold and he's got, uh, I don't know, 50 pieces of silver, something like that. Um, we'll give him 100 pieces of copper. There we go. So he's, he's now got some stuff on him. Um, you can, like I say, you can assign images to your characters as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you can completely stack them out if you want to, or if it's just something that just a passing kind of thing, you don't need to do that. So that, can, that'll do. Can you, can you have a? Do you have a stat a a um, a random stat generator for NPC? We have. Um, it's it goes along with our because we've got a load of random generators built Special. into. Um, into the game set editor 
So you can randomize lots of different things and create lots of different kind of things on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, so where am I looking? Random encounters. Oh no, it's in, um, in the editor here. So you've got a whole load of generators, cool. which you can use to, there we go, um, to, to generate names, um, legendary names, stuff like that. And you can, you can use a generator to, um, to sort of create stats for, mm -hmm. for people as well. So you don't have to go sort of rolling every single NPC if you want to. Uh, another, another thing that is not live yet on this version, but we're looking, looking at um, allowing you to create a NPC from a monster. So okay. you can take a monster and it will create an NPC based on that monster. And that's, that's going to make life really easy. So let's back to our badges. Um, you, you have passed 10% funding now. Woo! Yay! Well done. Good. Oh, still very scary. <laughs> So there's our Bob the Barman. I don't think I've got a picture for Bob the Barman. Uh, I, have to, I have to load some in for when we um, when we play this adventure. So let's go back into the campaign player. Back to our boozy pub. And let's uh, move that down there. Separate that. So we've got our poker game, cheating players, story text, people sat at the table. Um, and we can also we can change that now and we'll bring in let's get rid of them and we'll just have um had our npc in there bob the barman so there's our bob the barman um he's not sat at the table is he? he's at the bar so at the bar and then we'll have our mysterious um acolyte as well there we so yeah, there's our new, our new thing there. So we can click on the little eye drop to get a very quick overview of what, what was our debug window again, of our um, NPC, mm -hmm. or you can click on him, and you can go straight in and have a look at him and do any interactions with Bob the barman as as if you was dealing with a proper character. So cool. you've got access to absolutely everything there you want to. Now. So I think this is probably done enough for now. Let's come out of here. So that, um, that notice that you had for, for the cheating poker player, one of the questions was, could you create a character that can only be seen by somebody who's, who's drunk on the owl from the pub? Um, you, you would do that by adding that uh, sim similar sort of action as the notice cheating poker player. You just put a... Yeah, you could you just you just add. I mean, if you like, say so you can go as crazy as you like with this when you're building your campaign up. Yeah. You know, you, you you could just dump in another um, NPC monster thing in here, and and add your play and add your you know all, all the players to the table if you want to, um, and and then access the cheating player if you know you mark him as this is the one that if they notice he's been cheating, and then maybe you. If they say something, you might end up um, creating a bar brawl, in which case you would just drop in an encounter. Yeah. And 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 then you would just you would we would create that that brawl um, as an encounter uh, with yep. all them NPCs sort of uh, all in there, you know. Yep. And your players could sit back, or they could get involved in it. It's it's up to you as as a, as a GM to play it how you how you want to play it, really. So yeah, so that's our boozy badger pub. We've got our everything in there now. That I think that we need. Um, yeah, so let's now move over to our Scooby Mansion. Um, again, we would create an overview. Old mansion. Um, that is dark and. Dark and twisted. Twisted. There we go. Dark and twisted. Um, we would then maybe add a a GM note this time, and we might say this is something that is for you as a GM only. So you might want to just. Uh, it's not a part of the overview because your overview is just to tell you right. We're in this old old 
mansion and it's dark and whatever. Um, the GM note will can flesh out something a bit more, but so that you know that maybe um, the players don't know but this mansion is owned by Big Bad Dave. Me. Something like that. Um, and, and that could be um, a, a, an NPC that we, that we create, and he could be the Big Bad. And they might not know his name, but they might have learned his name back in the bar if they're speaking to people. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's create Big Bad Dave. Let's, let's, let's create an NPC for him. Um, so we're going to go new NPC, and we're going to say Big Bad Dave, which is our ID for that. And that's his name. Big Bad Dave. Big Bad Dave. And, um, yeah, I mean, we can go, go crazy with this. Let's, uh, what should we make him? He is... Let's make him a, a real evil dude that doesn't like anything. He can be male. You can have whatever genders you like in here as well. So you can create create your own genders to make, you know, to suit anybody. Which is yep. cool. Let's say he is a, <laughs> a dragonborn. Badgerborn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, black ancestry. And he could be a... A wizard, let's say. But we'll make him a level two wizard. Just to... He's got no subclass. Uh, is he going to be a school? Let's say he's a uh, evocation. It's like blowing stuff up. He's not affiliated to anything. Yeah, he can speak common. That'll do. And you can add, you know, all the stuff in here. And let's just... We'll add a role play note, which just makes our um playing of that character so that we know what accent and stuff he is so uh big bad dave um is as common as mark <laughs> yes, very, very well early agent. something like that to update that you can you can do a background and stuff and ch change the appearance and um, yeah. It's... I mean, in essence, it's a it's a complete character sheet. Yeah, just it's, for an NPC. You just for an NPC, and you know you can go as mad as you like with it. Say so it's a bit more there. It's given proficiency in that. Um, yeah, it can be yeah, something like that. But yeah, he just goes mad as you want. Hit stats, uh, he's level two. Well, that'll do, let's leave that as it is. Um, say his hit point max is 25. No death saves, that's fine. Not killing him off yet, he's got no stack data. Um, let's give him an armor class of 11, that'll do. Initiative. Oh, let's see what he's. No, it's not a wild shape. Uh, let's say plus one. Let's give him a plus one on that. Give him a thirty movement. And so you need to just fill it out as you as you want to. Yeah. Proficiency to no inspiration. Custom tracker. Um. Dead, quit that. Dead friends. Something like that. Dead friends. There we go. So there's our little custom tracker. Uh, you can do his skills. I won't do that now. Um, give him some spells. Fireball. Uh, fireball. <laughs> the only thing you can cast. Yeah. Fireball. Oh, well, let's just give him a, a DC of I don't know, just making this up as I go. Um, so that'll do. He's got an intelligence. 
base thing, storage, traits and feats. We'll go back to that. So there we go. We've now um, we'll just given some experience. I'll do. So here's our big bad Dave. Um, we can give him a picture, which we will do at some point. And we've just created this NPC. Um, we can give him some equipment as well. So he might have uh, some kind of staff of fire because he likes fire. Yeah. Um, he like, knows like burning it. things now. Yeah. So with, with things like um, with the weapons, if you don't know what it is, it comes up as a, like, uh, as a whatever you've put it in as an unknown item. So this is just a blackened staff, and then you can learn the blackened staff, and then it's you find oh it's a staff of fire. You can't use it yet until you attune to it. So we can then um, go into the learning again, you know, if I, and you can attune to it, and then everything comes available to you. Cool. So you've got that, which is quite fun. Yeah, uh, there's, quick. So, there's something going on in chat as well. Um, Baron Snowhand mentions uh, remembers the the badger dagger. So the ba Badger Dagger is now owned by Big Bad Dave, and to heal himself, he'll stab himself in the leg. A bit like an EpiPen. Badger. Yeah. An EpiPen or an, an adrenaline shot. <laughs> yeah. This is what was in our um, a little Easter egg in our in our. Um, oh, right. I have to have a look. I have to have a look. I did not spot that. The but... Badger Dagger is engraved with the initials DC and gives you a rather painful health boost. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool thank you so much <laughs> we'll, we'll attune to that so there's our badger dagger um, with actions of stab which gives you 1d4 piercing damage but gives you 1d8 of healing as well <laughs> it, could, it, could, it could be really good it could be bad it could be you know it could go both and you can lob it as well so that's quite cool so there's our badger dagger let's, uh, and he's got there's yeah that can We'll, we'll equip that as well. So he's got both of those things equipped. Um, he can, um, well, what spells should he be able to have? Let's say he's got Firebolt. He likes fire as his cantrip. Um, it was level one. He can have Burning Hands to go with the theme. And level two. He can have yeah. flaming yeah. sphere. Yeah. Got to go with the, the thing, and then you can do a level three. I don't know, you can cast a fireball. So um, they were prepared spells, so we can go in and prepare them, and then they're available for use. I didn't, I didn't give us any spell slots, but hey, it doesn't matter. We can go back to that later. So this is our big bad Dave. He's now on his combat actions. He's got his badger dagger that he can use, which he can stab or throw it. Um, he's got his staff of fire with no global charges at the moment. We can use it as a one-handed, two-handed, and it also has burning hands, fireball, and wall of fire as well. <laughs> so he is fired up. You know, you might have to fight this guy. So there he goes. But he's only got 25 hits, hit points. So, you know, he's going to be like a bit of a glass cannon, I think. So there we go. That's our big bad Dave. So now we've created our our um, our big NPC. We can go back to Badgersville and the Scooby Mansion, and um, it's dark and twisted. They don't know, but this our mansion is owned by Big Bad Dave. Um, we can stay say a story of um, the mansion is old and old, dusty. Yet you feel a eerie. Is that eerie? Yeah. It is probably in an eerie yeah. presence. Yeah. That'll do. So there's our little story text. Oh, pop up, go away. And we will. Yeah, let's just, let's just bung in the encounter. Um, let's say this is a uh, minions. Saves minions. 
and this can be what's we have what can what's what's the dave minions be i was going to say someone earlier i think it was baron snowhand again said kobolds kobolds yeah kobolds. or the uh or the hounds of badgerville as well jen said the hounds of badgerville oh hellhounds hellhounds yeah that'll do let's let's add a let's just stick a kobold in there a minute and we'll add in um a hellhound uh how many kobolds should we have four Four kobolds. We'll randomise their HP between five and not fifty-six. <laughs> <laughs> Those five are hard kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> so between five and six. So let's say the Hellhound um, will change his name. What was what was it called? The Hound. The, the Hound of Badgerville. Hound of Badgerville. So there's our Hound of Badgerville, which is based on a, a, a Hellhound stat. Um, we'll only have one of those, but let's just bring him in on round two. That'll do. We'll keep him as he is. And then um, let's say Big Bad Dave as well. And he is going to be an enemy NPC. Um, he's got his name. And let's say his arrival round for an NPC is going to be four. That'll do. So there we go. We've built up our little encounter there. Um, we can add some loot to this encounter. So what, what should we what should we drop? What can be the loot? Obviously, he's going to drop his badger dagger if you kill him mm -hmm. because he's already got it in his inventory. So what other kind of stuff will the kobolds have? I I think they've been uh, braiding local merchants, so they could be trade goods. Um, yeah. various coins and, and, a, and a few objects of yeah let's give art. him a bit of copper um, give, him some, give him a random bit of copper between 10 and 20 say um, we can add in what else did you say a uh, it, it, trade goods so maybe we'll make some bolts of cloth or something like that uh, say some common clothes that'll do they've got kicking around and drop a drop a couple of those so i was, I was going straight for things like ring of protection plus one <laughs> It's to say that because um one of the things that popped up on our discord was um someone posted about you know the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon mm -hmm. where, where they all arrive, you know, straight off from the roller coaster, and the first thing they're given is super magic weapons, like level one characters, and they're like wielding clubs of doom and <laughs> stuff like that. And then uh, one of the comments was, "Yeah, our DM never gives us anything like that." I was like, "No." <laughs> so there we go. So it's going to drop some copper. Some random between 10 and 20 pieces and some clothes. There we go. And then uh, obviously Big Bad Dave's going to drop some stuff as well. So there's our little encounter all ready to go. Um, anything else that we're going to do in this kind of little area? I was going to say we're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Could we uh, uh, free a prisoner? Yeah, we could do. Oh, it's a rescue mission. Okay. Yeah. Could be a rescue mission. Yeah, we could do that. That makes sense. Um, so. <laughs> Me too, Pete says raid the wine cellar. <laughs> let's, uh, let's save that a minute then. And let's. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll add in. Um, we'll add in Bob the barman and pretend we need to rescue him. Because he's been taken, so he's a friend. So it's Bob the barman. He's going to be, um, let's say he appears on the same round as Big Bad Dave, and he could possibly be killed by Big Bad Dave if he feels like he wants to kill him. So let's uh, let's do that. That's that's a good thing. So it's a rescue mission. So we can add that back into our boozy pub um, onto our 
quest. So a uh, small task there, worthy enough. They need to rescue uh, Rob the barman that is actually at the bar at the moment from the mansion um, from from the mansion who is being held by big bad days. Okay. Cool. So there we go. We've got that now. I like, I like the fact. Uh, I like the fact it's so easy to go backwards and forwards, and you can just change the story details or add to the yeah. story details. That's quite interesting. That's yeah, you can just jump in and out. Um, you know, this and let's let's say we've got a on this task. Let's have a death timer. So we will not go in there. We will go and add a timer element to this that we will trigger when we um, start our encounter. So let's drop that in there. And Bob's death timer. So this is how long you've got before they start turning on Bob, for instance. So let's say he's got five minutes. It's a, uh, let's say it's an a global timer and yeah it's a five minute timer so what you can do in here it's got time slicing as well and um, which will then take time as you're in your encounter as well and we'll start this as soon as they enter this area yeah. so there's our there's our bob timer bob's death timer we'll stick it up a bit there we go and then when we enter here we can start the timer going and we know that we've got five minutes to rescue Bob. Uh, and obviously, when if they're faffing around in here, they don't know that um, that, that time is running already. And you can just say, oh, it's old and dusty, and there's all stuff going on here, and that time is still ticking down. Then when we enter our um, encounter, it's going to generate our encounter. We'll also roll for our character for now. And there's our four kobolds. Uh, there's our character. Here's our reinforcement list. So we've got Hellhound arriving on round two. We've got Bob the Barman's going to be dragged in by Big Bad Dave up here. Yeah. And if you look in, in our um, timers, you can see that time is now spliced. So it will take six seconds per round. So as we go down, go to the next one, it's then taken six seconds off. Hellhound's yeah. arrived. Yeah. We then go down. Still taking, it's taking another six seconds. So that will that six seconds will just keep going depending on on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and then we get to our final round, and Big Bad Dave and Bob the Barman have now entered, and they're in here as well. So there's yeah. Dave, there's Bob. Click on anyone you like to get their information on them, and we can start running that. So I'll just reset that for now. So we don't need that. We don't need the loot because we've not done anything there yet. So that's our, that's our death timer. There's our encounter. We can um, stop that, get rid of that. Anything else you reckon we should add? I mean, we're, we're, we're an hour in now. So let's stay. Um... Oh, it was going to be a trap, wasn't there? Let's just stick a trap in. Yes, it was. Depends what kind of traps we've got already. It was a spiked pit trap. Spike pit trap, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, pit trap. Spike pit trap. That was nice and easy. That was good. Yes. Um. Death by spikes. Um. Additional notes to that. And there's our, there's our trap there. Um, can add any detail to that as well. So if you want any, um, you can, if you want, want say, in a, to uh, an ability to find it, you can put a DC on that as well. Yep. So there is our, our little area built up. Baron Snowhands in chat has just had an idea, but no, Baron, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning spike pit trap, no. 
a lightning spike pit trap. So you can add you can add these. These these are all traps that are built up. If, um, you know where where I went into. I'll show you where the generators were. Um, you've also got traps in there, and you can mm -hmm. have, you can kit that out with all the traps you can ever imagine in there. Lightning traps, Raiders of Lost Ark ball traps, you nice. know, whatever. Like, um, and then then they're available to you in here. You just drag them in, uh, which is pretty cool. One thing we haven't done, we've not added any any mood to this. So let's go back to our boozy pub, and we'll click on this bottom right hand thing which brings out my which i call i use this for my audio panel yeah and we will drag in let's drag in a track uh so we drag in a music track and this can be tavern music i think it's in our starter pack tavern music well they can play quite quietly in the background and we'll loop it as well so, um, or we'll also, we'll get that to auto start as well. So whenever we enter here, it's going to play our tavern music. So if we come out of there, we enter, we get our tavern music playing. I, I have a question. So um, when you're a player and you have yep. your device, your character sheet and basically your, is it in your device? Is yeah. that music? Would you would you just solely use the device, or are you still using a desktop as well? So would the music come from the desktop, or would it come from the device? It comes from wherever you like. Okay. Um, I mean, as as a GM, you would have, I'd have it running from my device. Yeah. If you're a player on my, because there's there's certain settings in the in the settings. So if we go in and look at the uh, network you've got receive network play sounds okay so obviously if you're sat at the table the same table as your gm you don't want your device suddenly firing up the tavern music as well yeah. so you would yeah. turn that off if you're a remote player you'd have that switched on and then it will receive um play notifications from uh, from the gm so um, you could you could have it if you've got the bundle loaded on your device. You could it'll have it'll be playing on there. Or some people just have it have their GM connected straight to um, their Discord or whatever they're using for for voice or audio, and it'll you can transmit it that way. So you can, there's there's a few various ways you can use it. Okay, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking you could do atmosphere music from the desktop, and then scary noises from the person's device if you could do that and so it, it comes because it'd be nice and close if the device is in front of them oh to make them jump and stuff yeah, yeah i suppose you could do that because yeah because <laughs> i mean there's i already have a wake up um functionality which is like um it's a big gong that goes off so if someone's like in the kitchen and in uh, not in your house or wherever, and they've disappeared off and it's their turn, you can fire off a big gong to them. <laughs> gong them. I know it's their go. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, you'd use a, a similar thing for that. For, um, for that. It's a good idea. I like that. Cool. So here's our boozy pub, complete with music. Um, you can have sound effects going on in there as well, um, which is all cool. That will then carry on over. And then in here, so let's just turn that audio off from here. And let's stick in um, some more spooky music in here. And you get a nice crossfade when you change places. So spooky. Uh, see that's in here as well. Let's go with... Maybe that's a bit too spooky. Let's try. Yeah, that one will do. So we'll auto start that. We'll loop that as well. That's fine. So we've got this kind of. If you, if you also wanted to overlay uh, some sound effects, 
you, you can put them both in there to almost start stuff. So if we wanted some yeah. dogs barking you know, or howling or something. Stuff in there as well, yeah, because we've got dogs barking. So I'll 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 um I'll stick did, in. That. Did you say um the sounds are powered by Sirenscape or is this? It can be. Oh, okay. Um, these these are all sounds um, that are part of a bundle that I've got installed. I've just got a starter mood pack installed. Mm -hmm. Just got some basic stuff in there, so we can have a bark. Um, turn the volume down. You can have that auto start, or you don't have to. So that when you enter this area, um, you can you can sort of just trigger that if you want to. Yeah. Um, but you but what you've got. Um, let's turn that one up a bit. In the sound, in the source, you can download from a UGM bundle. You can have, you can play a remote, uh, a local file, so you can have any MP3 or WAV that you've got on your machine, um, and play those, um, or a remote server. So you've got anything there, but you've also got over here, you've got a Sirenscape um, one as well. So you can drop a Sirenscape on there, um, and then you've got your Sirenscape URL that you can paste in there. And then that will trigger one of Ben's Sirenscape um, sounds or music files as well. That's nice. uh, same yeah. thing goes with Spotify. You just drag a Spotify one on there, and you can launch. Uh, keep doing that, um, and launch a playlist of of what you've got. So yeah, it's how it's whatever you've got really. Um, but you know, we've got a whole load of sound and music files that if you haven't got anything else, we can use them. It's pretty cool. So let's um, come out of here. So we've got our Boozy Badger Pub. Starts playing nice music. We've got all this stuff for them to do. We can then go into our Scooby Mansion. It automatically crossfades over to the scary music. Yeah. And you can have some dogs barking or whatever you want in the background there. And you can build that up build it up as much as you like you can overlay a hell of a lot of sounds and stuff um yeah i think so it's just turn that one off for now um but yeah you've got um in here with your sound you've got a lot you've got loads of normal controls in here but you can also control things like your reverb of your music and your sound effects to give it a bit more ambience if you like yeah um you can change the overall number of um sound effect channels that you want um available to you which i mean i'd never run out of resources on my on my devices so i always whack it up full but you might have you might have some devices that um that can't cope with too many too many sound channels yeah. but i've run it on my kindle and that's not very powerful and that never never fails so there we go i think that's uh that is fantastic a lot there so if um, you if you just gonna say if you have any more questions uh for justin in the audience uh please do get them over now we will be wrapping up soonish dog casting fireball <laughs> So yeah. St Steve, any more questions from you on on we won't we have to face the Scooby Mansion in in a few weeks' time. It, we, we do we do have to face Scooby Mansion in a few weeks' time. Yeah. Um, so if one of our viewers wants to wants to do a map, uh, we'll sort out how we pass that over. Yeah. Um, so we want a map of, of Badgerville, or or maybe a map of Badgerville Mansion. Uh, yeah, no, you can do both. I mean, if they, if they want to do, even if it's a scroll on a bit of paper, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just send it over. We'll have a ba uh, the a little map of Badgerville, with um, with the pub on there and the mansion on there, and then maybe a little um, a, a, a little map of say the the mansion, so that we can uh, see what's in there. Yeah. So it will it will take any image format. Um, yeah. Or you'll convert it to PNG or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it would take PNGs, uh, JPEGs, start, you know, the the normal stuff. Um, because it's cross-platform and it runs on um, like uh, Android and iOS and stuff, it's uh, it, it won't take things like a Photoshop file. 
yeah. has to be saved out as a JPEG, so it's cross-platform portable. Um, but other than that, yeah, any any kind of image file can get dumped on there, and it yeah, it'll just just work. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so if, if somebody wants to do a map, uh, you can post it in our Discord, and we'll get it over to Justin to get it loaded. Um, I did have. Um, I did have one question because uh-huh. I'd seen it and it stood out tonight and I hadn't noticed it when we was on uh, last week is what was the big green link chain thing? Oh, what yes. What was that icon? <laughs> yeah, um, that is... Let's go there. This one up here. Yeah, oh, up yeah. There. Yeah, that, that is, it's just for ease, really, um, because you can, you can run this um, as one big thing like this. Mm-hmm. Or if you turn the link off, it it just separates them. Oh, gotcha. So yeah. It, it just yeah, it just it, it's it's how you however you run with it. I mean, sometimes um, on the right hand side you want to stay static because you might have your all your different sound effects listed there, and you just might want to just have them on your tablet without. But in this list here might be a few pages long of different stuff. So yeah, that's that's all that one does. Just a way of linking and then and unlinking the the two um, tracks, we call them different tracks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, uh, El Castro's asking track three question mark. Did you demonstrate that? I might have missed it. Yes, I did. It was, um, it was where we, every time we go in this night, it's going to start the sound. Um, the track three is this bottom right hand corner which is where we put the the uh, the music tracks in yeah yeah um that's useful for stuff that you know you just want to that's not part of the story as such you just want to like triggers can go in there which i but all these side areas uh, everything is customizable so if you go into the book you click on the cog here uh you can you can change things around so you can sweaty hands on the mouse so you can change the, you know, the, yeah. the size of all this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you can. It's all customized, and then you can rename the tracks as well. So, at the moment, track one is called Story Maps and Points of Interest, but you can you can change any of them, and uh, have it however you want it to be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, and does d- does it take PDF? If we were to give a give you a map in PDF, would uh, would that work? Uh, no, because for the same reason, it it's not portable. Yeah. Um, it, you know, PDFs require they're not that they're they're not the system won't um, like Android or iOS don't open them natively. Um, they are kind of you need a separate app to do that. Yeah. So it, it works with anything that will natively open on the operating system. So the map would just need to be converted from your PDF to a, a JPEG or something like that, and then you can use it within there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, all right, thank you. I, I don't have any questions. I see you, you, you have got another backer. We're now at 18 backers. Yay! Um, there is yeah. There has been links uh, popping up in the chat throughout. I will post the link to uh, Kickstarter again. Uh, there are still some early birds left, I think. Should be. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's not a shame for me because I used one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are uh, some yeah, early birds left. I think there was, there was, you did quite a few early early birds um, rewards. Didn't you? Was, that, was it 100 you had on there? Something like that. Yeah, I think it was 100, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think this is like about ten gone, from what I remember. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, I mean that's one of the the maps that we've I've just dropped in, um, which is uh, one of the it's, it's just a different perspective of that um, fighting pit that I showed you the other day. Yeah, that looks nice. It's that really cool. looks nice. Hold on, where's it, where's it, where's it, where's it? <laughs> got to switch the cameras, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because we saw, we saw the top down on uh, on Thursday, 
And now let's see how I see you. That 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 lighting makes that look like a photograph, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's dropping a another. I mean, that's if I drop in the normal one. This is the top down of it. Yeah. Dragon's Fire just just uh, stated she's uh, changed her pledge to a higher pledge. Ooh, thank you, Dragon's Fire. That is awesome. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think the main thing is, you know, just tell tell your friends. Yep. Tell, the more, tell everyone. The more we can tell spread everyone. the word, um, the more people you'll get playing this or using yeah. this, which would be which would be good. Yeah. Right, we are going to wrap it up there. I'm going to switch the electricity on. <laughs> that, that, Plug that, in. that will help. <laughs> I always say at the start, is everybody plugged in? Everyone says yes until they're not. Right. So, again, thank you very much, Justin. In a few weeks' uh, time, Justin will be back. And <laughs> we will face Badgerville, uh, Big Bad Dave, the Badger Dagger. Um, and lots of other things. Why are we going to a pub that smells of wet badger? Well, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, I told you the audience would, would just put it in for us. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Justin, good to see you again. Um, we've got everything crossed for the Kickstarter. And uh, we'll, be t- we'll be chatting offline anyway. Um, yeah. But yes, please do go and check out the Kickstarter page. The links have been in live chat. Um, apparently there's an Easter egg in the in the video. Go go and check it out. See if you can spot it. I I need to go. I didn't spot it, so I'm going to go back and have a look. Yeah, where you see the word homebrew in the top left, <laughs> you should, you'll see the good old badger dagger in there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and have a look. I need to say that. And and thank you very much, badger dagger engraved with DC. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's there. It's canon. It's canon. <laughs> And we will see you again all soon. Cheers and bye bye. So. Bye. Hey. Are you um, running a closing trailer? Oh. Okay, I'm going to start the raid then.